Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast and in today's forecast we'll be breaking down a huge storm that'll be bringing severe weather across the United States over the next 72 hours. This will pose damaging winds, large hail and tornadoes to a large chunk of the Great Plains and perhaps even parts of the Midwest. I'll be giving you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast but let's begin with what's happening across the United States today and we'll first begin actually with with the east coast i did want to touch on this we officially have a tropical storm that is formed just east of north carolina and this will be making landfall late tonight into the overnight hours bring storm surge up to five feet flooding rains and as well as the threat for high winds upwards of 80 miles per hour upon landfall so be mindful if you're in north carolina have your weather radios charged have flashlights on hand there will be a potential for power outages pretty large area though it's really been sheared off though the big problem with this entire tropical system has been the wind shear it has sustained winds of 60 miles per hour but again the problem has been the wind shear and that's why it's been subtropical for a while it has a warm core now so that's why it is now officially a tropical storm and it will continue to move off to the north and i wouldn't even rule out it gets close to a category one hurricane before making landfall later tonight but a lot of convection now moving inland to areas in north carolina and as well as south carolina in addition to this there's a very large wind field so it's all across south carolina and a good chunk there of north carolina is seeing a pretty stretched out wind field bring some tropical tropical storm force winds and let's talk more about the central plains this is an area that we're watching very closely because we're going to see the threat for severe weather tomorrow across a very large area that we're not really looking at a severe weather outbreak i would say as of right now i don't think we're going to get to that level but we are going to be looking at some pretty numerous severe storms with all modes of severe weather being possible again across a pretty large area and we'll talk about more on this later in this forecast but notice as of right now there is some convection out there across parts of the midwest and as well as back through the mississippi valley not any severe weather out of that the area that we're actually watching for tonight for severe weather is back over in wyoming south dakota and nebraska for tornadoes damaging winds and as well as some hail and this is all from a low pressure system that is just off to the west of the rocky mountains that'll move over the rockies tonight creating a lot of wind shear and a stronger low level jet and that will start to amp up the risk for severe weather as we go into tomorrow so a lot of things to break down this forecast we're really going to break down the severe weather threat but let's talk a little bit about the jet stream because this is what's actually causing some of the severe weather threat in the united states notice where the trough is located right now again it's right where i just showed you right over western wyoming very strong westerly flow in the upper levels that's going to create at least some severe weather tonight and that might create some longevity of supercells as we go into tomorrow notice that trough starts to move over the central and northern plains we're going to see some pretty strong westerly flow eventually as we go later into the afternoon we should start to get a kick out of the southwesterly flow which should help to amp up a little bit of that tornado threat across parts of areas like iowa minnesota and as well as even maybe missouri nebraska and kansas that'll be the tornado risk really for tomorrow maybe oklahoma and arkansas as well as we go later into the weekend and into next week that trough moves off to the north it really starts to weaken we might see some isolated severe weather in the midwest going into sunday into monday but honestly it looks to be a very very low risk at this time and the main reason why again is because this trough will be kind of weakening out it's not going to be very strong by the time sunday hits as we go into monday to tuesday that trough continues to really just sit there just north of the midwest it's really in the upper midwest in uh, minnesota by tuesday into wednesday it starts to move again and by thursday into friday of next week we're going to probably be looking at a pretty large heat dome that's going to start to build back into the southern plains i know a lot of you are looking forward to fall weather but honestly it doesn't look like that's going to be happening here for the last week of september as that heat dome starts to build back into a large chunk of the united states and we'll talk about more on that later in another forecast all right let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next several days and we'll begin with tomorrow which is scary storms saturday as of right now there is a large region that we're watching a marginal threat of severe weather that goes from north dakota back through texas it almost goes from canada to mexico that's how large this area is tomorrow and this could originate from one trough over here and we're also going to see a small low-level disturbance develop back over in parts of the southern plains so basically two different areas that we're watching for enhanced risk of severe weather is ongoing for parts of southeast kansas western missouri and as well as northeast oklahoma which also includes the tulsa area slight risk of severe weather goes near minneapolis goes all the way back through areas like oklahoma city there is a marginal threat for parts of north texas this here is a conditional risk. I do think there'll be a cap in place tomorrow, so I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of activity there. One other thing I want to point out, there is a low tornado risk across the east coast of the United States tomorrow. That is because of tropical storm Ophelia. All right, overall, the damaging wind threat is the main concern, hence the enhanced risk 
of severe weather. This indicates a 30% chance within a 25 mile radius of damaging winds. So make sure you're prepared for flying trampolines, flying debris. Make sure you have that proper precautions in place. Bring loose line items in tonight. Don't wait till tomorrow. Large hail threat is also a concern out of these initial supercells that we see develop tomorrow afternoon and evening. We will be watching for hail as large as baseball sized hail. So make sure you're protecting your vehicle and make sure you again you take any of those proper precautions before tomorrow hits. Tornado risk is a bit interesting. We're really looking mainly at a tornado risk across parts of Minnesota and Iowa. I wouldn't rule out that this goes to a small 10% risk, but I think we're going to stay at the 5%. There is enough shear for tornadoes tomorrow for sure across this region. This is going to be basically adjacent to where the low pressure system is, so we're going to have a stronger southwesterly flow, which will increase that tornado risk. Further down to the south, it's a lower tornado risk overall, maybe an isolated tornado or two in that green shaded area, but the risk is much lower the further south you go. And before I show you the timing, one thing I did want to point out is the low-level jet. Again, notice how it really ramps up going into late Saturday across areas like Iowa and Minnesota. This area here is where we're watching for the greatest tornado risk, and that's around 30 to 45 knots for the low-level jet, which again helps to rotate supercells at the lower levels. So a southwesterly flow makes it a pretty prime situation for at least a few tornadoes. Overall, the tornado parameter values as well. One other thing to point out here, notice during the morning hours and around lunchtime, not really organized, but by the late afternoon and evening that is where we'll be watching for a tornado risk and you'll see this on the future radar here in a second but that is the prime corridor it's gonna be in northwest iowa back through southwest minnesota for that greatest tornado risk overall so make sure you have that tornado action plan in place here's what we're looking at for timing so during the morning this is around seven in the morning storms will be rolling through nebraska and south dakota these will be mainly damaging wind producers they're not really going to be producing much of a tornado risk there might be an isolated one but i think that risk stays low after lunchtime we have those storms moving through central iowa and as well as parts of southwestern Minnesota, better chance of tornadoes will exist out of a little line of storms that will likely develop during the late afternoon and evening hours across parts of southwestern Minnesota and as well as northwestern Iowa. That's where I think the greatest tornado risk is. Then as we go later into the evening hours, I think that tornado risk begins to fall apart a bit, and then it'll really weaken out as we go into the overnight hours. Maybe an isolated gusty wind storm, maybe a brief tornado in Wisconsin as we go into Sunday, but again, I don't have a whole lot of confidence at this point that Sunday will be anything too crazy and the central plains will be watching again for storms in iowa during the late morning afternoon hours they will start to go into missouri and i think northern missouri is a bit of a sleeper spot when it comes to maybe storm chasing there will be some damaging winds for sure in this area with the storms that do develop maybe some large hail there might be an isolated tornado in there but i'm not really confident that we'll see much of a tornado risk out of that activity notice as we just go after dinner time so around six to eight o'clock in the evening storms will fire up across kansas and northern central parts of oklahoma that's where we'll be watching for damaging winds and hail to mainly take over might be some flash flooding across this region as well as some storms may stall a bit and then eventually going into sunday morning storms are rolling through arkansas with mainly a damaging wind threat going into suspicious storm sunday we do have another slight risk of severe weather across north texas i might go live for this event so make sure you subscribe to our channel i will not be live tomorrow by the way i am away for this weekend but that's the area that we'll be watching for severe weather across parts of north texas damaging winds large hail and maybe even an isolated tornado will be possible during the morning hours storms rolling into areas like Paris, Texas, Texarkana, so Northeast Texas with some storm activity. By the late afternoon, that's when we're watching for some storm activity across parts of North Texas, with damaging winds being the main concern. Notice around 7, 8 o'clock, that's when the storms will be rolling through areas like Sherman and Plano and Dallas. Eventually going into the overnight hours, those storms will push down to the south. Damaging winds and again, large hail are the main concerns, but we might see an isolated tornado. Make sure to stay tuned. We'll keep you posted with the latest. This forecast is not brought to you by anybody.